welcome to the third edition of the Finlit Network. The aim is to raise and discuss the existing and the potential effects of the transformation from uh, society with cash to a cashless society. The Riksbank, of course, plays a key role for money and payments in Sweden. That's, I think, pretty obvious. We're going towards zero friction investing, like an asset cloud. You have all these things, cash, crypto, stocks, funds, and you can just move between them with one click instantly. What I find fascinating is that the fintech industry is absolutely booming and access to all of these opportunities is being wildly democratized. But we're really missing the first step, which is spreading education on how to use the existing tools. When we're losing our connection to the to the symbolized value that cash is, then we also get a disconnect for what is money, really. So if cash continues to decline as rapidly as it has done recently, Sweden will in practice be a cashless society within a decade or two. Uh, what we also see is that a lot of fintechs is using a lot of fintechs to build their fintech product. But to realize these benefits, uh, our consumers need first the knowledge that they exist and how they work. They also need guidance. And that's maybe a good thing for the panel discussion. There is a difference between knowledge and guidance. For example, on TikTok, uh, we have a lot of youth uh, finding information and trends, and that's not always really trustworthy. But still, since it's easily access, uh, accessible, a lot of youths feel that that, that is a, a right information to, to use. It's, it's critical for us to take advantage of new technologies, allow both fintechs and banks, but also society to put together capabilities that will enable individuals to make um, well-educated decisions. Uh, it goes over what money is, what taxes is, how you take a loan, should you take a loan, uh, what happens if you cannot repay a loan? Uh, all those things you should learn from an early age. And from our research, what came up is how something which is fundamentally created to connect is equally capable of excluding. But we need to take responsibility to ensure that children actually do have the skills and knowledge that they need to navigate this new financial landscape when growing up. Of course, they should learn this in school, but we also need to team up and create products to simplify the teaching processes also for parents. We need to improve the knowledge, the attitudes and the skills from the people. We encountered some striking paradoxes between envisioned and actual outcomes of financial inclusion efforts. So the first step is to change this informal economy to a formal economy. There is also a governmental role uh, that must be played. Most of the time it's uh, reactive, as we can see with the buy now, pay later, those type of, you know, the SMS loans. And they need to put a lid on or actually a roof on how much can credit companies make of unknowing, clueless consumers. But I do believe in a shift because we do have the opportunity to make this much more rapid thanks to technology. We're already gathering ideas for our fourth edition of the Finlet Network. Um, so I want you all uh, to stay tuned. Thank you for participating in the third edition of the Finlet Network. <laughs>